Scrum planning is one of the four formal inspect and adapt opportunities of the Scrum framework. It is the first event in a sprint where we answer three questions, the why, the what and the how. In simple terms, it is an opportunity for the Scrum team to collaborate and lay out the work that is forecast for the next sprint. Sprint planning within a one month sprint has a time box of eight hours. If your sprint is shorter, the time box will typically decrease in line with the length of your sprint. For example, if your sprint were to be two weeks long, sprint planning would likely scale down to a time box of four hours. Notice that when I'm using the word time box, I feel it's important at this point to define that a time box is a maximum amount of time needed for an event, not a minimum or an expected time. Using less is okay. The Scrum Planning event is attended by all of the Scrum team, the product owner, the Scrum Master and the developers. If needed, external experts may be invited to support the developers in their planning, but this isn't really common, but it's possible. The inputs to a successful Scrum Planning event are an ordered product backlog, information about current market conditions, an objective or hypothesis for a potential Scrum goal and an expected capacity of the developers. The outputs of a successful sprint planning event are transparency over what is required to move forwards towards value and a sprint backlog taking the form of a sprint goal, the product backlog items forecast to be needed and the developer's plan of how to turn these product backlog items into a useful increment. Now I said there are three questions that can be answered during a sprint planning event. The first of which was why. Why is this sprint likely to be valuable? This is the opportunity for the product owner to present their objective or hypothesis to the team and explain why it will be valuable to work on during the upcoming sprint. They then collaborate with the Scrum team using the inputs I mentioned a moment ago. If the developers don't believe the objective is possible, they need to have the courage to challenge the product owner and then work together to negotiate this objective into something achievable. Once we have an achievable goal that is transparent and understood, we have a sprint goal. Everyone in the Scrum team commits to this sprint goal being achieved within the next sprint. Whilst I said that the output of a successful sprint planning event was the sprint backlog, and that is certainly true, the minimum expected output is a formulated and transparent sprint goal. Without a sprint goal, the upcoming sprint would be aimless. The second question that is answered in the sprint planning event is what? What can be done this sprint? Based on the understanding of the sprint goal that has just been committed to, the developers pull product backlog items from the product backlog and perhaps create any new ones that are needed to form a list of forecasted items needed to achieve the sprint goal. Part of this process is likely to include further refinement, collaborating with the product owner. But the purpose of question two what can be delivered this sprint is to produce a forecasted plan. This is perhaps the most challenging part of sprint planning because it requires the developers to understand their capacity and the art of the possible with their skill set and time available. They also need to consider their definition of done and what is expected of the increment at the end of the sprint. Over time, this forecasting will become easier for a mature self-managing scrum team. They'll become used to it. The final question is question three, how will the chosen work get done? This is where the developers, considering the forecasted plan they made of individual product backlog items, they will discuss and plan how those PBIs can be turned into a usable increment. This may involve further decomposition of the product backlog items into more manageable tasks. This process is entirely at the discretion of the developers. However, it is often considered beneficial that product backlog items are decomposed into smaller items of one day or less. This is because it's easier to map and manage progress and inspect every day in the daily scrum if those product backlog items are small. All of those three questions together, once they've been successfully answered and are transparent across the entire scrum team, are referred to as the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog, specifically the sprint goals, should be a measurable step towards the product goal. To wrap up this topic, I want you to create your own sprint backlog. I know we attempted something similar during our topic on the sprint goal, but bear with me as this activity will have a difference. You're going to create a sprint backlog for tidying your house. I want you to write a sprint backlog for you, your partner and anyone else you live with for what is needed to achieve that sprint goal. You know your capacity. 
and you likely know the definition of done for housework. Pause the video now and create your sprint backlog. Okay, so you're currently halfway through the sprint and you and the people you live with have made progress on tidying your house, that's great. However, you've discovered an impediment as you have progressed with your sprint backlog. In sprint planning, you made a forecast and you've so far been faithfully executing those product backlog items from that list. But I want you to imagine that as you progress down that list, you noticed a significant leak of water under your floorboards. That sucks. What do you do? Pause the video now and adapt your sprint backlog as necessary to take into account this new learning. What would you change? Now, it doesn't matter what adaptations you took into account, as long as your sprint backlog and your sprint goal specifically, the sprint goal needs to remain the same. The backlog can be adapted based on the information you have now. During sprint planning, you had no idea you were going to find a leak and therefore you could never have forecasted that into your plan. And that is the reality of complex work. You don't know what's going to happen. The takeaway from this section is that the purpose of sprint planning is to make a forecast. The Scrum team do not commit to anything other than the sprint goal because there is too much uncertainty and risk to do so. As teams become more confident, more mature, you will find that the sprint planning event runs more smoothly. Now it's common for the Scrum Master to facilitate the event, however there is absolutely no expectation he or she will do so. In actual fact, you may find it is more successful and a more collaborative event if it is less facilitated and more of an organic experience.